Ah, Nights into Dreams, Sega's big mascot that never was. It might be hard to remember now, but Nights was supposed to be for the Sega Saturn what Alex Kidd was to the Master System or Sonic to the Mega Drive. But of course, hindsight is 2020, and as we all know, this series never really panned out for Sega. But did you know that there's actually a surprisingly high number of spin-off titles based on Nights? And these are so obscure and so hard to come by that I had to get some outside help for this one. So today, I have with me Nick from Retro Break. Hey Steaker, pleasure to be here. You've definitely come to the right guy for some obscure Knights trivia. As you can see, I'm a huge fan of the Knights into Dreams series, and I've picked out some really interesting and obscure games to show in this video, so thank you so much for inviting me, and I hope you all enjoy the episode. Good to see you, man. So, yes, if I had to get some extra help for this one, you know we're getting into some really weird and obscure stuff, even by this channel's standards. So let's get started and check out some weird, obscure and bizarre Nights into Dreams games. First, let's get the obvious one out of the way, because I know people would ask if we didn't cover this one. Christmas Nights Into Dreams was a demo that came bundled with the purchase of a Sega Saturn console or as part of other promotional bundles. Honestly, the way you'd get this game really depends on your country and region, but the main point is that it was free, and usually came bundled as part of something. At its heart, this is just a demo disc with a single level from Nights into Dreams. But, as I'm sure you all know, when you set your Sega Saturn's internal clock to the Christmas period, the level becomes Christmas themed, and you honestly get a pretty great rendition of Jingle Bells. No joke, I think the entire game should have been like this, because I think this looks and sounds better than the actual retail release, but hey, maybe that's just me. Also, as you can clearly tell, I'm not very good at this game, so I apologize to any Knights fans wincing at this gameplay footage. Even after multiple attempts, the best I could get was a C grade. Now, the game has tons of other secrets, some of which are also related to the Saturn's internal clock. Like, for example, playing as Knights' rival, Riala, during April's Fools, while others need to be unlocked through this matching minigame. Basically, the better you play, the more attempts you unlock, and each time you get something right, you unlock stuff like CGI images, promotional videos, and even a slideshow of Knights merchandise complete with poorly photoshopped JPEGs. Oh yeah, poorly photoshopped JPEGs. This is my kink. These are... fine. Honestly, the most interesting thing about this is the one where you unlock Sonic the Hedgehog. Sega fans went an entire generation without a true Sonic game. The closest you had was a tech demo in Sonic Jam and this. So uh, yeah, Sonic fans were really desperate back then and we would take anything we could get. Overall, yeah, this is a pretty cool demo disc. But it's also a fairly well-known release and it's also included in the Steam remaster of Night to dreams, so it's not exactly obscure. Nah fam, we can go way more obscure than this, and Nick will set you up with that. So this is Knights on the PS2. This release is obscure for a few reasons. First, it was only ever released in Japan, and it came out in 2008. That's actually a year after the sequel came out for the Wii. There's very little information about this game online, it's nothing more than a footnote on the main Wikipedia page. So let's take a proper look and see what this version's all about. If you've played the more recent releases of Knights on the PS3, 360 or Steam, then this should all look familiar to you. That's because those versions are actually based on this one. You're greeted first with this menu where you can choose to play either the upgraded PlayStation 2 version of the game, which has much improved 3D models and textures, or the Saturn original, which was actually remade from the ground up for the PlayStation 2 using this same new engine. All this mode does is simply replace all of the PS2 graphics with the original models. In terms of gameplay, it's identical to the original. Same stages, same layouts, same music and enemies, same incredibly fun gameplay and addictive scoring system. 
system. Unfortunately, the CG cutscenes are also lifted straight from the original, with no updates to the character models, so they do look quite outdated compared to the rest of the game, especially if you compare them to the Wii game. So, what makes this version unique? Well, apart from all of the graphical upgrades, there's also a bunch of unlockable extras which you get through playing the main game and achieving certain ranks in the stages. Most of these come from the unlockable presents in the Christmas version of Knights, which Steeker just talked about. And the Christmas version itself is also bundled in here too. It's not quite as full featured as the standalone Saturn version, but it's still great that it's included. Sadly though, it's missing the Sonic section, which was definitely a highlight of the original. Interestingly, there were also plans to include a Halloween version too, but unfortunately that was scrapped, although you can still see remnants of it within the game's code. So the game is fantastic, as you would expect, but the most unique thing about this version, and the reason I was so excited to get my copy, was the inclusion of this storybook. Of course it's all in Japanese, but the artwork here is just incredible. It's such a great bonus to include with the game. This book actually originally came out separately in Japan around the launch of the Saturn original, and it was reprinted to be included in this set 12 years later. It's such a shame that this PS2 version didn't come out outside of Japan. Perhaps it was too late with the PS3 and the 360 already being several years onto the market by 2008. But maybe if it was released as a budget PS2 game, it might have helped keep the series relevant with a global audience. As it stands though, it's just an obscure release for a series that deserved a better chance of success. You might think that making the PlayStation 2 version of Nights into Dreams a Japan exclusive was a pretty odd decision by Sega. But trust me, you haven't seen anything yet. For example, did you know there was a Nights into Dreams game released exclusively for the Game Boy Advance? Oh, what's that? You never saw it for sale? Well, that's because it's not even a full game. This is literally an unlockable demo, or to be more precise, a score attack minigame. But the worst part is that to unlock this game, you have to connect the Game Boy Advance to a Nintendo GameCube. And then, you need to own a copy of either Phantasy Star Online or Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. God damn it, Sega. I get the appeal of being niche, but even my 12-year-old cousin's birthday party had more people than whatever market you were trying to aim for here. Luckily, people discovered this minigame and rightfully realized that no one is going to actually own all the hardware and software required to play this. So fans took it upon themselves to create a ROM file which contains just the Nights into Dreams minigame, which is how I'm playing this. And, uh, yeah, it's a minigame, alright. I mean, the graphics are... not great, even by Game Boy Advance standards. The music is okay, it's catchy and all, but I feel the Game Boy Advance could do better. And this is basically a score attack minigame with the same three or four levels looping over and over. You have to fly to collect blue orbs and go through rings, and once you've collected them all you go to the exit. And if you're fast enough you even gain a time bonus. And uh, that's it. Super basic, super simple. But I'm not gonna lie, I kind of enjoyed it for what it was. I get that this was never going to be a full game, but I guess that it's a decent enough minigame, especially now that you can easily find the ROM online. Not great, but it's a pretty nifty curiosity. Huh? Oh sorry Steeker, I was busy playing Nights into Dreams on the GBA, which I just downloaded through my childhood copy of Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. Yes, I was one of the few that fell for Sega's marketing back in the day. So anyway, on to the next game, this is Sonic Pinball Party. Of course, this isn't Knight's first pinball outing, that was actually in the casino stage in Sonic Adventure 1, which also included a tantalising glimpse into what could have been with a true follow-up on the Dreamcast. I'm still so sad that never happened. Sonic Team decided to take the Sonic and Knight's pinball theme and turn it into a full game for the GBA a few years later, and a great game it is too. The version I've got here also includes the original Sonic Advance, but you can also get it separately or as a bundle with Sonic Battle as well. 
The night's portion of the game includes two tables consisting of a main stage and a boss fight area. The pinball physics themselves are great and really help keep the game enjoyable as you're trying to complete the various challenges on the table. The goal of the night's table is to enter the capsule which then allows you to collect one of five crystals in order to move on to the boss fight. Once you defeat the boss there's actually a further six themes for the main table to play through, each one being based on one of the original game's stages, complete with GBA renditions of all the stage music too. There's a load of other things to do on the tables too, and some night nice specific things as well, such as collecting blue chips that appear once you've filled a certain meter up, and an acrobatics mode where depending on the loop the ball moved through, you get different points added to your total. I played this for so many hours to try and get past the second stage. I played it every single night for the past week, even taking the GBA to bed with me to try and get further, but I just can't do it. It has made me appreciate video game pinball more though, and I was really starting to enjoy learning how to complete all of the challenges on the board. It's just a shame that the difficulty in this game is so high that it was getting really frustrating. There is a story mode too, which is also equally punishing. Unfortunately, the Knights characters are shown on the tournament leaderboard, but unfortunately you never actually get to play against any of them, and through the story you actually only visit the Knights table once as well. Overall, it's a really well polished pinball game, I just wish the table layouts changed as well as the backgrounds, and I wish it was just a little bit easier overall. Anyway, on to the next game. Okay, so far me and Nick have been covering stuff that's somewhat obscure, but still relatively well known. But now, the gloves are off. From this point forward we'll be covering the true obscure stuff. Because this is Nights into Dreams Shockwave Edition. Yeah, I told you we were going obscure. So what the heck is Shockwave? It's basically Flash, except Flash was more popular and produced better games than any Shockwave title I've ever seen. But uh, yeah, this is uh, not good. I mean, this was made in 1996, so I'm willing to forgive a lot. Heck, this is what the Sega website looked back then, but this game is just not good. It plays a lot like the Game Boy Advance Time Attack minigame, as once again, you have to collect torps and go through rings. But now, the controls are much more basic. You cannot do loop de loops or controller speed. All you can do is go up or down. Yes, seriously. And if you catch a red gem, you'll get a temporary triple point boost. But on the other hand, if you hit an enemy, you lose all your points. And uh, that's it, really. You might be wondering why we're covering this game. But remember, this was a Nights into Dreams game that was available on the official Sega website. For all intents and purposes, this was an official Nights into Dreams game. I mean, yeah, it was terrible, but still official. Oh, but don't worry, because Nights was not the only Sega Saturn property to get this treatment. You also had Last Bronx, which is basically a matching minigame, though I'm not really sure how this relates to the Sega Saturn fighting game, or why Sega thought that playing this would make you want to buy the retail release, but whatever. You also had Sega Worldwide Soccer and Sonic 3D, and uh, yeah, these are all just equally awful. Seriously, these games make new ground titles look like Nier Automata or Breath of the Wild. Oh, but don't worry, we can still go way more obscure. Right, Nick? Tiger Electronics, the makers of some truly awful LCD games, somehow got Sega's permission to make a range of games based on their IPs. Honestly, the best thing about this game is the packaging. It's so colourful and it's something I'm very happy to have in my collection. The actual game, though, it's incomprehensible. There's no real feedback for anything you do in the game, the idea is to use the spin button to navigate this circular area and pick up the blue crystals to deposit in the bigger crystal. The problem is though, it's almost impossible to tell if you've actually done that or not. Sometimes there's enemies floating around which might or might not hurt you, but again it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. More interesting than that though perhaps is the fact that there's actually two other versions of this LCD game out there. 
One was a miniaturised version of the Fong game in a range that Tiger calls the Pocket Arcade, which again I would love to own one day because that packaging is just incredible, and the other was a version for Tiger's R-Zone system, which was a head-mounted display which had interchangeable cartridges. I don't know why anyone would want these games that close to your face, but the option was there if you really wanted to look like a fool in front of everyone. Who would want to do that though? Oh right, me. This is Knights for the Eye Toy. Included on Sega Superstars for the PS2 along with some other classic Sega franchises and honestly it's pretty fun. You move your arms up and down to ascend or descend in the level, you can put one arm up or one arm down to the left or the right to turn left and right and you can also put both hands straight in the air to boost forward. It's a really simple game but it actually works surprisingly well considering how primitive the technology is by today's standards. It's also a lot smoother than I was expecting too, with some really nice graphics, and of course all of the classic night sound effects and music too. The gameplay is extremely simple and you will tire of it after a while, but as a curiosity in one of my favourite game series, it's actually pretty fun. And that's all from me, now back to Stika to show you the next obscure title. Remember that Night of the Dream Shockwave title we took a look at before? What if I told you there was another one? This time with Knight's Journey of Dreams Link Challenge, an official Knight's Flash game that was also available on Sega's official website. Now, the good news is that this game came out in 2007, a full 11 years after the first Shockwave title. And uh, yeah, the graphics and sound are way better, I'll give it that. Not only that, but you can also move in all 8 directions, as well as do loop the loops and even control your speed. Well, control is putting it kindly, because I just cannot get a handle on these controls. So here's the thing. Knight's Journey of Dreams was a sequel to the original Knight's game and launched for the Nintendo Wii. And I'm assuming that Sega wanted to promote the motion controls with this Flash game. So instead of using buttons, you have to use your mouse and... Oh my god, I cannot get a handle on this! So, basically, you left click to have knights turn in that direction. The farther away your cursor is from knights, the faster he'll move. And this sounds simple in theory, but knights just keeps jerking around no matter where I click. Sometimes I feel like I finally got a handle on these, only to once again lose all control at the slightest hiccup. And it does not help that it's actually quite easy to get knights stuck on literally anything. So uh, yeah, this one's pretty bad. And just like before, there were a lot of Sega titles that also received official Flash game releases. You got everything from Sonic, to Super Monkey Ball, Crazy Taxi and even Panzer Dragoon Orta. Yes! Did you know there was an official Flash version of Panzer Dragoon Orta? And you know what? It's most likely the best one out of all these Flash and Shockwave games. I mean, it's still not great. It kind of plays like Panzer Dragon Mini for the Game Gear, but honestly, considering how bad all of these other titles are, I'll take it. I can forgive the Shockwave Knights title simply due to how worthy of a game it was, as the Flash game they have seen was still in its infancy in 1996, but Knights Journey of Dreams Link Challenge came out in 2007, New Grounds was in full swing by then. Hell, some might even argue it was a little past its prime. There are some amazing fan-made Flash games out there, so why are all of these so simple and just not good? How in the world these Flash games are supposed to excite people for the retail releases is beyond me. Honestly, Sega should have just hired some new ground devs and have them make something. It would have been better than this. Other than Panzer Dragoon Orta, I think the best one was this Japanese Sonic Flash game, where you have to jump as far as you can using careful aiming, timing and making use of Sonic's boost ability. But getting back on topic, it's kind of insane to think that for a series that was supposed to be Sega's next flagship franchise, with the exception of the Wii sequel, Sega made it as hard as possible to play all of these Nights into Dream spin-offs or games. I mean, how are you even supposed to find half of these? Even when they were new, most of these weren't easy to find. But for better or worse, this 
is the treatment Knights got. And hey, it could have been worse. At least it's not like Nights into Dreams was turned into a pachinko or a slot machine, right? Yeah, that would have been silly. Can we even imagine if... Oh, yes, it's real. There is an official Nights into Dreams slot machine. And, uh, well, what can I say? It's a slot machine. Not a whole lot going on in the gameplay department. At least the music's nice, I guess. And people wonder why is this series so underrated. Even Sega didn't seem to have any faith in it, if you ask me. But at least we will always have the original and that is something that no one, not even Sega, can take away from us. And more importantly, I want to thank Nick from Retrobreak for helping me out with today's video. Be sure to check out his channel and subscribe to him if you haven't already. I'll be sure to leave a link in the pinned comment. In the meantime, I would also like to thank all my Patreon supporters, as well as the newest member to the Stika Patreon crew, Tony Toon. Is he a bootleg Tiny Toon? Maybe. But more importantly, thank you for helping make the channel better. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Bye!